Hi there folks, been about a year since my last video so I figure it's time to give you an update. Um, lots been going on, I'm showing you this picture here uh, uh, because I've got a new test location for the wind turbine and um, there's the uh, the old one, the straight shot. I've actually got two of those turbines. That one has the KT blades and I had one on there uh, in this area previously with the uh, those Missouri Falcon blades. and. Um, uh, I've taken a lot of video. I haven't put it all together yet. I'm just going to give you a little taste of everything now and show you my new project is what this video is going to be about. But um, there you get a good visual of, of uh, the, the test location, um, which is uh, highly exposed to the wind, 360 degrees around, and, uh, and it, definitely, it definitely sees uh, basically destructive winds and uh, almost um, daily winds. I, I don't know the average. I have a uh, I drive up about 40-50 minutes to this location and, uh, and it's quite remote. Um, there's no power there, no power poles, there's really no people <laughs> and, uh, except for the one fine gentleman who uh, allowed me to use this space. Um, and he is off grid so we are going to give him an upgrade and I'll show you my newest project which uh, we're going to bring up there for him um, as soon as that gets done. Anyway, you're looking at a wind speed gauge there. Um, this area has seen 60, 70 miles per hour winds and, um, and sustained. And I've actually had a few uh, um, destruction things I want to share with you, which is kind of fun in the learning about these wind turbines. Um, what you're looking at there is the, 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 the turbine with the, the KT blades. It has uh, very inexpensive eighth inch thick one inch by one inch magnets on it. And uh, you can see that it is I think it made a maximum of 200, and there it is, 241 watts, uh, and uh, it, it might make a little bit more than that. It is hooked up to a one single deep cycle battery and a 12 volt charge controller, one of those little power planted ones there. You see the power just went out on it because I don't have the watt meter hooked up to the battery. Lots of little information here, but um, uh, that's that turbine. Now here's the previous one that I had up there. They look identical. Um, they're kind of clones of each other. This is the one with the Missouri blades that I had on it. Um, mechanically everything made it but I roasted a stator with it and you can see the destruction there uh, it heated up so much that uh, that the magnets flew off the rear plate one flew off the front plate and um, mechanically everything else held together uh, which is amazing there there's more to talk about with that but um, we're gonna move on because uh, the video is moving here um, okay so this is uh, the new axial flux I've been working on. This has been my most recent project and uh, it's kind of something I put together incrementally when I can find time and uh, this is uh, the biggest turbine I've made so far. It has 12 inch rotors. Uh, the fun thing about it is the major dimensions are all based on what I read in the Hugh Piggott book. There's, um, you, you know, as you all know, um, uh, the fine gentleman Hugh Piggott put together uh, the wind recipe book for us and uh, showed us how to you know make uh, these turbines with a stub axe and all that and it's a brilliant idea and I just uh, I, I went ahead and, and used the major dimensions and then I put it together in my own metalwork um, system and methods some of which is um, things I've done before which I've is tried and proven hence the uh, the center axle system there that I've used um, with that rear flange on there and uh, and then now that um, I've, I've acquired that plasma cutter I've, I've been able to uh, make parts um, that are a little bit uh, maybe a little bit more intricate and more accurate than I was before so there uh, notice a few things while we're at that angle that the that shaft is tilted back about five degrees not about five degrees it's exactly five degrees because that was done in CAD and um, you can see my finger pointing to a rear um, flange there that um, that was all built onto the shaft and then uh, the shaft so the shaft was cut to length it was threaded on both ends the uh, the flange was was mounted Onto that, onto that shaft, and the whole shaft went back in the lathe, and it was trued up. Uh, that is, I faced the front of that that plate so that the magnet rotors and the blade hub and all that just ran true and square um, all the way out to the end. Uh, notice something else. See how the distance, not where my fingers are, but right there um, between those two plates. Uh, originally, I meant to have the the 
blade hub closer to the magnet rotor. In fact, it would have been about where those nuts are on that all thread there. Uh, but I realized that there would have been interference with the, uh, the, the, the mounting bolts where my hand is there, the mounting bolts for the stator. There's three of them. I think it's about those three holes, the outer holes, are about 16 inches. Uh, in diameter that would mount on there and there would be interference with that blade so I am going to move the blade all the way forward kind of where it, where you're seeing it now and there's two pieces of quarter inch plate there and the blades will be sandwiched between them if that makes sense the 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 root of that blade is going to be bolted in a sandwich between two quarter inch plates and those other little pieces you saw welded in there you can't see them at the moment but um, but they they stand the blades often enough. It's just what I needed to do to make the blades fit on there, and it's a very good fit. So there you see the furling tail. Okay, uh, my my hand. I'm moving it up there. I still need to to build something, um, design a piece that will uh, contain the range of that tail. So when it swings to the kick out position, um, it's out. I, I'll have to refer to the book. It's something to the effect of five degrees, and then when it comes back into into the moment of furling and, and furls up, it doesn't, of course, um, allow for the blades to strike the tail. So, so uh, I, I may even put some adjustment in there if, I, if, I, if I'm into it. Now, that little ring I'm putting on the top of the yaw bearing, the yaw bearing is unique, okay? Um, that ring, its purpose is to retain the bearings within the, um, the yaw there. There is an upper so there's two rows of radial bearings in the upper part of that cylinder there. And that pin is like one and three eighths um, OD, and there's a hole that goes up through the middle of it for the wires to go up, right? Uh, and so if, if you've ever taken apart a car and you, you saw the, the um, what do you call it, uh, the, the top of a strut assembly and it has a bearing top, that's kind of the way that works there. It's for the thrust. The weight of the, the turbine is down on two... Um, uh, radial ball bearings that are double sealed and, and all sealed up like that and that ring will hold it together. Uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is put another bearing on the bottom, a, a bottom yaw bearing uh, that's bigger and I have, uh, I have one already that will fit a particular size of pipe um, and so that's how the it's going to be attached to the tower. There's more bearing than it's probably going to need. There you see me take that nut off of that so one inch um, bolt basically or in this case it's kind of a, a pin and then that nut's going to go on top of there and I'm either going to drill a hole all the way through and uh, put a cotter pin in there or I may just use a, a lock nut and get, get a large lock nut for that and uh, that will prevent that from going around. By the way the length of that that um, tail there is about 58 inches but I can trim it down um, that's longer than the recipe book calls for but I can trim it down I figure uh, once I get the tail on there. So what else is to know about this. You saw a grease cirque in the main bearing for the spindle. There is going to probably be a grease cirque in the uh, in the tail there and uh, perhaps one over by the you know to, to get to the lower ball bearing in the yaw. And um, gosh beyond that I'm not sure what else there is to say about this turbine there. Um, uh, you know there's a there's a lot to kind of get it together when you when you make it in a 2D program and trying to imagine the whole thing being put together uh, you know you, you, you it's hard to describe but you, you move these parts around I don't I I don't have and I've yet to uh, to play with a 3D CAD program and I do like the 2D it's it's for plasma cutting and uh, and it, it'll work great um, note this so you see those um, you can see on those magnet rotors there's holes in there for the, the magnets. This one is designed to have the uh, the you know the, those one inch by two inch by half inch thick magnets you can find on what is it magnets for less and CMS magnetics. Um, I've actually got a set of 24 um, so that I can make sure everything works. I bought the set of blades and I got the wire um, and so uh, I'm, I'm going to now always you know bolt down the uh, the magnets the JB weld after my experience with that last turbine um, although it held together great the magnets did heat up they probably lost their magnetism on that previous you know those images you saw earlier lost their magnetism melted JB weld and just flew right off the plate I mean you know serious mother nature power 
there and uh, those things should just be bolted down so that's the plan there and uh, now we go to the CAD program uh, where I'm just going to kind of not show you necessarily what the um, how I made all these parts but sort of what they are and and how it works uh, the name of the program is uh, solid edge 2d and uh, it's the one that came with the uh, the uh, the plasma cutter that I purchased uh, about a year ago uh, it is a uh, you know I've got the grid turned off right there so you'd ordinarily see graph paper but uh, but it's really worth noting that um, that you know arc light uh, CNC plasma cutter in this program is extremely powerful and uh, the things that that you can make in in no time um, I'm just very grateful that I've I've come into this and uh, anyone can do it I'm, I'm pretty sure if you spend the time don't be intimidated by CNC by the way uh, at any rate um, to talk about the parts here uh, on the left you see those three parts um, if if you want to go back you can look at it those are blade extensions I believe um, they would extend the blades eight inches so would add 16 inches to my diameter and uh, I decided you know I, I, at first I'm thinking okay I want more swept area I want I want a greater blade diameter um, for more power but then in hindsight you know just go ahead and um, uh, go easy don't try and push it you know add more power to it because then you're you're getting outside the formula um, uh, to, the, to the right of that you can see the two plates uh, the 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 rotors for the the blades uh, the hub I should say and those parts and then where the cursor is right now are the upper and lower um, yaw bearing mounts uh, and then of course Aside from this, I, I cut the pipes on a little cold saw. I think it's a uh, two and three quarter um, drawn over mandrel, the same stuff I, I, I've been using for all the other turbines. And, uh, and then that slides in between. You have to, you know, look in and all this sort of stuff. There, the cursor's over um, the extensions for the, for the mounting the stator. And, uh, <clears throat> and, um, you can see the the magnet rotors there. I think it's number ten bolts that go that hold the magnets on. Um, I undersize those when I cut them a little bit, and then I take a drill bit and a drill press, and I and I bring them open to where they they need to be, so they're more or less perfect, um, and it makes less work for me. But you know, when you cut a really small hole with that with a plasma cutter through quarter inch steel, you get um, uh, it, it's not it's not the most accurate thing. Um, you, you might get a little bit of an oval. You can slow the machine down. There's there's lots of tricks. I'm not saying that I know them all, but I've gotten pretty decent with it. And uh, I, I, what I do is I undersize some of these holes to where they're under by just a few thou, and uh, and then just open them up the rest of the way. I find that to be useful. And I know there's other ways to use that machine with um, uh, like a center punch system where it just uh, works. But I, I, I digress. I'll uh, not go into the machine details so much there. But um, there you see the flange that mounts everything, and uh, you know once you get that that bolt pattern, you can just copy it and paste it and make your all the other parts that go with it. So uh, that's that. Uh, then um, you know if you look to your left right there, um, those two parts, uh, they're to the left of the the three stator mounts. They I added a few extra holes there is all, all I was going to say. Those three, those extra holes are for uh, mounting some accessories. They're a little bit um, arbitrary, but uh, the idea is an RPM gauge with a little disc on the back, and then um, and then perhaps a shroud for the uh, the, the whole uh, magnet rotors and stator and all that. So I, I left a few holes there that at a later point I'll I'll work on. Now you can see the tail there. Um, interesting thing is um, when you go into the Hugh Piggott book, the wind recipe book, uh, the turbine recipe book that is, he shows you how to make a tail and, and the distance the, the boom needs to be and all that using pipe and everything else. And so there you can see I've, the cool thing about the CAD program is you can get the area. So what I did was I, I went ahead and made his tail sort of theoretically in CAD with uh, I think it was like 36 by 48 inch um, square or rectangle and then a, a standard bucket has a 10 inch circle so you you can you can follow his plans you can make the tail and then you can click on it and check this the area um, in square inches 
and then I can take my tail and or any shape for that matter I can take a star or you know any shape and and then just scale it up until it matches the um, the surface area of that now my tail there is actually a little bit bigger but I haven't cut it out yet so I have time it's bigger because I was going to use those blades blade extensions but at any rate that's that's that and then uh, here I have um, I have the video sped up um, double time so that's the machine runs half that fast and uh, and there you can see it um, following around the parts and uh, again a, a wonder of the world um, this this CNC plasma because um, because a lot of it kind of opens up a lot of things and uh, again I'm very grateful for it um, and uh, there you can see um, you know how it works it's over a water table and uh, it, it's quite accurate considering um, you know what you're cutting through there is quarter inch and uh, and, and it can cut uh, it has a hypotherm uh, p85 I believe is what it is and I believe starting with an edge you can cut up to one inch so thick and then you can cut down you can change the bit and cut uh, 24 26 gauge uh, you know, basically roofing steel um, so you can cut all kinds of detail and and you can make those shrouds and things like that as well but uh, there are the parts um, right out there. There they are on the driveway just laying out and uh, you know there's some cleanup involved, a flapper disc um, and I gave you a close up there so you can kind of see what that looks like. I think that's the, the cut side not the side that comes out the other end. Uh, there you see the magnets and the wire and the blades you know. Um, axial fluxes are uh, expensive and uh, you, know, the, you know we're not even talking about charge controller or uh, the tower, the batteries, the wire, the time, frankly, um, and everything else. So anyway, I wanted to give you guys a quick update and thank you for your patience uh, with me and my channel. Please comment away. Um, I know a lot of you have interest in this and uh, and I uh, just want to thank you again. Uh, and with that, I'm going to say until next time.